Maybe you should have thought of that before you got knocked up by an alien, ma'am. Maybe it wouldn't be such a bad thing if the aliens came and took over everyone's brains. Balls, why are you not going for the balls? They're right there. They're right there. Hey guys, it's your girl Laisha K Geek XX Chic, and we are finally back with Invincible. We are back from the hiatus. It was a very long three months, but you know what? We had so many shows to fill in that gap. It didn't feel too bad, but all the same, I missed this show. It's a lot of fun, and we ended on a very interesting note. So I'm trying to rack my brain because it has been that long since the last one, but I know we ended with uh, Mark and his dad fighting up, uh, fighting off against the other Viltrumites. And they almost won, except for that one guy who ended up having to carry his guts in his hand, who came out at the last minute and broke Nolan's back. And well, Mark had already been finished before that. And the Viltrumite ship showed up and they took Nolan's, they took Nolan, who was still alive at the time. And they told Mark that going forward, he was going to be the representative for Earth as far as Viltrum was concerned. And basically it was now gonna be his job to take over his father's job and prepare Earth for colonization. And that if he didn't, they were basically gonna show up and take everybody out, including him anyways. So that was what was Mark was left with. And he was barely able to move at that point. Uh, I believe that Mark's little brother is still alive. I don't think the Viltrumites managed to get to him, but we don't know because since Homie did end up surviving, I wonder if Mark's brother is okay. But anyway, that's where we left things with Mark. And then back on Earth, we saw that Mark's mom was still dealing with a lot of her grieving process over how to handle this whole thing with Nolan and how to move forward with people basically hating the fact that her husband turned out to be this galactic traitor <laughs> as far as they were concerned. And we see that part of her process is that she wants to detach herself entirely from the government agency and the guardians and all that sort of thing. And she even wanted to get rid of all the traces of Nolan because she's ready to start fresh. She threw out some books, all of Nolan's books that he wrote. And we found out that those books apparently have information that Mark needs to have, whether it's about Viltrum or about how to defeat Viltrumites or something. But either way, she threw them away. So whenever Mark gets home, because remember he is still a very, very far, very, very far from home, he uh, is gonna come home to find a few changes that he may not be ready to handle. So yeah, I am ready to jump back in and see where we're gonna pick up from here. What Mark's gonna do? Is he gonna tell anybody about this? Is he gonna try to bear this weight on his own? We don't know, we gotta watch and find out. So let's get in, but just before I do, a reminder that if you would like to be notified of when I do uploads of this show or any of the other ones you might be watching from my catalog, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell. And if you like it, please go ahead, show some love to this video and leave some comments below. You guys are awesome with that. I love having those conversations with you. All right, that out of the way, let's get into episode five, which is called, This Must Come as a Shock, right now. A lot of bug blood. It's the Emperor's other son. Other he son. Dead? He's the prime son. So will Mark know how to fly all the way home? Because his dad kind of drifted here. Oh, well, the waterfalls are still intact. Thank God. Mark. No. Okay. She's all right. I'm sorry. I mean, really, this Mark, there was nothing you could have done. people, it's all our fault. Not our, your dad's fault. If my dad and I hadn't been here, none of this would have happened. Mostly your dad. Our culture doesn't assign blame. Smart. Only look forward. I mean, if you only live for a year, <laughs> blaming would be a really big waste of your time. Wait, Mark, how long have you been here? With no connection to your mom? You've completed a ship to take you home. Oh, I guess. Okay, so he couldn't fly home. But I can't go yet. There's still so much to do. Oh, the yeah. city will be whole again soon. He feels guilty. Your people must need your strength. Yeah, your mom needs to know you're alive. And your girlfriend. The might of omnipotence. <coughs> Tremble. Omnipotence? Okay. All right, Guardians, you no. got this. I'm sure you know your planet best. But there's more to do here. And you've I... helped enough. Yeah, you're hiding now. But there is something else I must ask. You want to take your brother his brother take with him, don't you? Yep. Him. Home to Earth. I mean, he's not gonna know anybody. Everyone's everyone he knows is gonna die every year. Look how much older I am than when you first arrived. 
He's like, oh yeah. <laughs> I'll be gone before he can form a sentence. Damn. Generations will pass before he's even an adult. What mother would abandon him to a life like that? Maybe you should have thought of that before you got knocked up by an alien, ma'am. But if he lives, he'll go searching for you, not me. Wait, no, that's my time with Nolan was special. Yeah, like, bro, Nolan knew this chick wouldn't be around long. That's probably one of the reasons he's so happy to hook up. Remember me, child. I don't think he will. Someday, I hope you'll understand why I had to let you go. This is rough on Mark. Like, how do you explain this to his mom? Who, who's going to raise him? He's in college. He will need someone. Mm. Nolan, you ass, leaving this all on him. Sins of the father, indeed. Thanks. Thank you, Paul. Is Paul trying to get in there, maybe? Not against it. Debbie should move on. Lord knows her ex did. Hey, Mom. <gasps> Don't ask. Mark. Oh. This is all the fashion now. It's been two months. Okay, it was two months. All right. I try not to worry, but even Cecil's been frantic. He's... Oh. It's not mine. <laughs> yeah, I thought you're going to need that drink now. I, I, I don't even have the words. Neither did we. Now he's left another planet in ruins and his, his new kid is sitting in my kitchen. I know it sucks. I'm sorry. He didn't have to go to that planet. He certainly didn't have to find a new partner and have a new baby. That's all true. He's never on the hook for the lives he destroys. Just leaves it for everyone else to clean up again and again. That's actually very true. I know, I know. <laughs> but that doesn't come on to Mark or the baby, though. Maybe I could take a year off from college to look after him. What? No, absolutely not. Have you gone for two? There's got to be other options. Like what? He's purple. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you're going to do with him. This is not a long-term plan. You know, you're right about dad leaving his problems for other people to fix. Very true. But he's my brother. And I, just, I can't just abandon him. You're a good kid, Mark. Well, you must get it from my side of the family. <laughs> get that dig in, Deb, but you're right. Yeah, I know how you feel, Debbie, but it's not the baby's fault. I'll take some time off of work and look after him for a few days. Figure it out. Yeah. Oh, have you two talked about Sir, everything I yet? I guess been. not. We're a little busy, Donald, if you hadn't noticed. Can we talk about the fact that I'm a cyborg? Everybody out! Oh, okay, Donald. That's right, you have a right to talk about this. <laughs> no authority at all, though. I need the room. Now. They're like, um, I guess. <laughs> Since when is he in, in charge? But he has a right to ask about this. This is pretty huge. So why don't I remember it? You were in shock. You got burned pretty bad. Oh, not the hand on the shoulder. Burned? Is that what you call this? No! With respect, sir. What did you do to me? Me? Cecil's innocent. What do you mean? He just works there. Oh, not the white room again. Are you going to see a room list. full of Cecil's? Omni-Man's body shielded you for most of the blast. When we pulled you out, your brain was intact. The rest of you, not so much. The rest they regrew you? You're you. Sort of. But better. Stronger. Yeah. Alive. Kind of. All these people knew? And I didn't? PTSD's a bitch. <laughs> I figured you'd be better off without it. You mean you'd be better off? Same, same. There's no time for existential angst. Angst? That's what you call Yeah, let the man process the fact that he's a robot. To go see the dean. Yeah, right. You're kicked out of school. You said you'd cover for me. I did. Like, yeah, oh, two months is a bit much, months. Mark. <laughs> I need to see Amber first. Oh, sure. Ditch me for your girlfriend, why don't you? Absolutely. Power of the P. Sorry. Oh, ah! And when exactly were you planning to tell me you were back? When I felt like it. Out of my way. You promised if I put you in the field, you'd follow orders. You don't get to pick and choose when that applies. I kind of do, though, because I'm the strongest person around, so. Things were just peachy. Oh, right. Yeah. Maybe you should find out how things were when you were gone. Oh, that's not all on Mark. Come on now. He wasn't exactly a perfect superhero before this. Okay, Skeletor, relax. You're angry about me not reporting in. Exactly. I don't need to. You got cameras in my mom's house. 
It's not cameras. We would never do that. Lies. I'll send a team to pick up Nolan's kid. <gasps> Can't. What are you gonna do? Leave him with your mom? Yes. He's an alien. And? We're more qualified to take care of him. Uh, take care. Call them off. Now. I'm sure your mom will love looking after her ex-husband's new kid. Well, you know, she's an adult. She can make those decisions on her own. And God knows it's exactly it. If they get a hold of that baby, they're just going to experiment on him, hoping they can find a, a weakness in Nolan. They took me to this insane planet. <clears throat> Terrium in uh, Philadelphia when I, you know, when I was visiting my aunt. <laughs> they're all like, we actually didn't care. Very real over here. She's not around the last few um, months. Right, guys. This would be when you all take a study break. Yeah. We'll get your notes later. Nice meeting you, Mark. I don't like her. College is no joke. I failed a sociology test that's worth a third of my grade. No. Oh, tests suck. When Grandpa died. I didn't take it too well. Mm -hmm. Thought with my dad gone. He was at least done ruining my life. He can't change how I feel about you, mm. no matter how many planets he destroys. Period. <laughs> Poke it. See what happens. If it moves its eyes, I'd be running out of that room. Oh, God! Come on. You're a machine, too. Really? No one Is this a nightmare? He's having a nightmare. Wake up. You're all right. Are you all right, sir? What is it? There's Could the skeleton be turning against him? Like, is a skeleton AI? May I remind you that Monster Girl's transformations cause her to age in reverse? I know how my team's powers work. Hey, I can hear yeah, you know. Yeah, she's like, I can speak for myself. If you get this controlling after one date, there's not going to be another one. Yikes. Yikes. No. <sighs> Shut up, Rex. Mom canceled. <laughs> Don't tell me. <laughs> and that's what's protecting the planet, guys. It's coming from Mars, headed directly for Earth. We've tried calling, but they're not answering. Hey, Martian, anything to say about that? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything to say? I wonder if there's anyone here with inside. Mm, okay, so he does Mars. think he saw something. Got it. But he hasn't said anything because he can't prove it. I am not a human person from Earth like I once did. Yeah, I think most of them are starting to pick up on that. Prepare yourselves. For the truth may be more than you can handle. We know you're a Martian. Oh! Don't you think we'd let you join the team without figuring that out? You all knew that? No. Like all Martians, we Your use eyes were huge. as our servants. Since they couldn't penetrate our shape-shifting skin, which is something they very much like to do. So when the opportunity presented itself, I took it right. By killing a human? Wait a second. What happened to the reactor? Right? Let's talk about that. Can't skip over that part of the story. And this is a maybe. He possibly became a possessed host for the singular and terrifying Sequid Hive Mind. There you go. There's that. You're sorry. They possess the real Russ Livingston and they're capable of possessing a million. Yeah, exactly. Horses. Turning us all into pod people. Thanks. An American astronaut up there to die. Why are we protecting? <laughs> He's like, I'm sorry? I don't know. <laughs> there are millions of sequids on that ship. Maybe hundreds of millions. We won't be enough. Look, I realize this is out of character, but I have an idea. I mean, hey, we might have to think out of left field to, 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 to do this one, because I don't know how you deal with a bunch of things that can possess your mind with our very, very poor skin. Can Mark just take the ship and, like, send it back in the other direction real fast? Still haven't fixed the lock on your window. I'm starting to wonder if maybe they want you. Damn, <laughs> her dad maybe. Ugh, or to get in your pants, or whatever you think. I, I mean, doing. I think if you had the opportunity, you get the second one would definitely be true. I messed up. People almost got hurt. Yes, well, everyone messes up, honey. And then I took it out on Kill Cannon, and people did get hurt. That one was more uh, on you for sure. Everybody fucks up. Exactly. To fuck up is human. Mm-hmm. Freaking robot or Rudy or whatever he calls himself now. They've all shit the bed at least once. Exactly. Multiple times. You were still pretty beat up from losing them. Who were those people? Then a hundred other battles with Team Team. Through all of that, 
You've saved so many. Look at Rex actually giving a good ass speech. Who'd have thunk it? I checked on that couple you pulled from the river. They're gonna make a full recovery. Physically. Because they might be traumatized for life, but. Thanks, Rex. Now, what do you want? Exactly. Now, for what you're really here for. <laughs> it's delicious. Yeah. What are we gonna fruit. Do you? Try fruit. Mark, we have a front door, you know. Duh. So passe. Well, so far, he hates everything. I guess he'll fit right in with the human kids. I got rid of most of it. Give it to charity. What? You, you could have asked me first. Yeah. Well, you were gone for two months. Ooh. And I couldn't live in limbo just waiting for you to come back. Okay. Take it back. I'm sorry. Mm. What were you looking for? It's just... Mark, I need you to go to space again. I just what? got I back. I got back from space. <laughs> If they get their tentacles on Earth, they'll be pulling our strings forever. We need to stop them. Sadly, he's right about this one. Well, think about when you go back to work. You'll need a trained caretaker, not some neighborhood baby. Stop baby. it, Cecil. Just consider it. No. Nope. Please. Cecil will turn that kid into a human pincushion. Don't do it. That baby doesn't deserve that. Just come back safe, okay? Yeah, this is part of the dating a superhero thing, Amber. It kind of sucks. It's harder than people think. That's why a lot of times those superheroes either end up marrying somebody or they date other superheroes. Uh, you're not the only one who can make a suit of armor. She's like, literally, this is what I do. <laughs> make things is what I do. This guy's now the ranking guardian on Earth. What does that even mean? <laughs> Says who? What does that mean? We're supposed to monitor other threats while they're gone. Oh, sure. I mean, what personally, I take the vacation unless it's something massive myself. There's only three of y'all. There's only so much you can do. What are we going to do? Stop robbers? Uh, get your damn snack and get out of <laughs> Oh, damn. He was real. And remember, kill fast, ask questions later. Damn. If there's not one emergency someplace, there's one somewhere else. Want them to know we're here? Of course. This just speeds things up a bit. Okay, whatever things are. Maybe it wouldn't be such a bad thing if the aliens came and took over everyone's brains. It's weapon systems. What kind of resistance we can expect once we're on board? Any help so there, Martian, Martian buddy? Is going to answer all of our questions. Someone tells me he doesn't know any of that. Those are Martian military secrets? Sir. But I will, though. Yeah. They'll know the difference between space garbage and whatever we are. You're telling us this now? Yes. I'll tell you <laughs> right. He's like, I'm kind of literal like that. Th those are the missiles I was talking about. Don't we have shields or something? Ah, uh, move! Damn. So Eve and Mark are the only way to get your asses home now. Great. Half pepperoni, half mushroom. And Meanwhile, these guys are like, what are we having for dinner? We have enough oxygen for at least ten minutes. I'm not sure I can hold this together. I was about to say, Everyone that's assuming she can handle it. There we go. Mark thinking on the fly. Okay, now how do we get in? Okay, teamwork is dream work. How thick is this wall? Hello, fellow Martians. Nice to see you all again. Slap him. I was just on Earth. And, um... Earth? You're the one. Yep. Gross. No! <laughs> They're a collective hive mind. Now all the sick ones know you're here. Someone didn't pay attention in the briefing. <laughs> well, it's nice knowing y'all. Chicago. <laughs> Hi, we're here. You think you could stop us? You could not. Gross. You. We remember you. Good. We can't pierce your skin. Oh, thank God. You're never going to get through all of them, guys. There's too many. Yeah, Mark, you need to go for the head or something. I know it sounds horrible, but I'm going to need you to go ahead and, like, take that guy out. I disrupted their nervous systems. But get close. Mm. This plan is terrible. You should have gone in his ear. <gasps> okay, I'm starting to understand what she said about how many times she's died and how much it sucks. 
Balls! Why are you not going for the balls? They're right there. They're right there. Damn. Well, that's the end of Duplicate. Nice knowing you, sis. Yeah, pay attention. Damn, that sucks. Well, getting new guardians again, I guess. It's off this ship, but you'll need to protect me until I'm done. How long? Five minutes. Five. Thank you. I was like, you need to get inside. I don't know why you're fighting from the outside. Smaller. Get smaller. That would be the worst vomit of your life. Damn. Well, that's what you thought. You were getting off easy, bro. This is why they warned you if you don't need to get ready. You stay ready. Goddamn. You couldn't have done that sooner. Damn, that Colossus took out your whole team. Dude, that may be, there may be more of them. So brave. Do it, you prick. I'll hold it together. You got this. I don't know, guys. Yeah, that was really pushing. But she was outside, too. Mark? Oh, my God. Okay. Oh, wait, there's more. Alan! Alan's alive? He didn't, the dude didn't take him out? Or is he in heaven? Hello? Okay, no, he didn't take Hello, him out. Uh, or did he think thing. he took him out? But then he just would have gotten out of the body, right? Oh, I broke, I broke it. I broke it. Oh, this thing. I bet this is, oh, I bet this is expensive. It was. Oh, huh. Yeah. I could have sworn you were in pieces. What did they do? I am glad to see you in one piece, Alan of Unova. Why? Who? What did you do to him? I turned off your life support machine. Okay, so I didn't I read that wrong. For yourself. And you did. You would either die or recover stronger than before. He was genetically engineered. You may now be able to stand your ground against a Viltrumite. Okay. Yeah, I doubt that. Dude, look at you. If I even see another Viltrumite, I'm gonna... I don't think you'd have much choice. Goddamn! That's your Viltrumite? No, I am something much worse. I am the only Viltrumite to ever rebel against the Empire. Oh. Until you told me about Invincible. Oh. And bring Invincible here. He is the key. To turning the tide of the okay, war. Okay. Maybe? Okay. I mean, I want to trust him, but at the same time, I'm like, bro, I don't know. But I mean, yeah, we forgot Alan was genetically engineered to be to go up against Viltrum, and he was their only success. I think he said he's gotten beaten before, but it never, I guess, never to the point where he was almost at the point of death. Whew, all right, guys. Well, that was episode five. And man, did they ever bring the series back swinging? <laughs> they said, look, we uh, took a little break, but we're going to bring it and we're going to bring it to the next level for y'all. So don't get comfortable. All right. Okay. So much went down in this episode, but we see that uh, the the people, oh gosh, the, the, the bug people, what are they called? I can't think of them. Thraxians, that's it. They managed to help Mark to recover from his injuries. I mean, he was going to recover anyways, but uh, as I estimated in the episode, he's not able to fly back. Like his dad did fly all the way there, but Mark has no idea where he is. And I think because Mark is half human, he can't fly out there. My guess is I think he does need oxygen unlike his dad does, but digressing. So he stayed there while they rebuilt a ship for him to be able to get home, but he also helped to rebuild their cities and we see that his brother and his stepmom, I guess you would call it, did manage to survive and uh, that they did end up sending him home, though it did look a bit to me like Mark was kind of a bit loath to leave. And part of me thought maybe he just didn't want to go back to earth and kind of deal with everything. But I also realized that he just feels an immense amount of guilt because like he said, he's blaming himself for what happened that Viltrumites came there. And it, again, it really isn't Mark's fault at all, but I get why he feels a sense of responsibility because he, 
Feels like if he'd been a better fighter, if he'd been able to defend himself or fight better, maybe he would have been able to stop all that destruction. But the reality is, even if they managed to take out the three Viltrumites that were there, the ship was already on its way. There would have been more. And I don't know that Mark would have been able to take them all out. I mean, Nolan got a bit of a workout with those three. So imagine if it was a whole ship full of them. So anyway, Mark was sent back to Earth and we see he was given a very, very interesting task. We see that his stepmother basically said, look, I'm not going to live long enough to raise this kid to adulthood. He needs to be taken care of. No one here. I can't trust somebody else here to have that responsibility. I mean, I guess they could have. I mean, if Mark wasn't there, my guess is they would just pass him along generation to generation. But I get where she was coming from. It'd be very discombobulating for the for the boy. Every time he gets close to someone, they die off. He'd have to keep reforming these connections. And it's because he's not like them, he would also feel very othered in that environment. So she basically said, look, I need you to help me out. Can you please take him back to Earth with you? Or at least he'll be raised by someone who understands what it is to be half Filtramite and who will hopefully protect him. And so Mark, because he's a good kid, he did it. Like it was not his responsibility at all. He's not obligated in any way to help his little brother out, but because he's a good kid and he recognizes that this little boy has nothing to do with this situation, he decided to take him back. But I have, the first thing I thought of is what, how are you gonna handle this with your life, Mark? Like you're only, how, is he, how old is he in the show, 18? 18 years old, maybe 19? Like this is a lot for you to take on at this age. And especially when you already have the other responsibilities of being part of the guardians and everyone kind of expecting you to pick up where your father left off as well. So it was a lot, but he did take it on, went home and understandably Deb was flabbergasted and doing her best to consume all this new information. She did not think in a million years that she would have to deal with Nolan's other children. We just, we realized she had just gotten to a point where she felt like she was starting to move past her divorce, I guess we could call it. But now to find out that Nolan is still alive and what's more is that he started a new family. Again, we saw Mark go through it all last episode. She now has to go through some of it, though I feel like for her, it's a little bit different. She's still feeling the way she's feeling, but I think as, you know, being the wife of Nolan, she probably can compartmentalize this a bit better than Mark did. But understandably, she didn't really want to have a lot to do with it. It should not be her responsibility to take care of her ex's kid. But once again, as I kept saying in the episode, the baby is innocent. He has nothing to do with this. And it really is Nolan that created this really awkward situation for this little boy. Because again, if he'd been thinking straight, he would never have impregnated a woman who has a lifespan that's a fraction of his, literally a fraction. If humans are a fraction, and we're fortunate enough to get 80 to 90 years on this planet, imagine something that only lives a year. No one was really on some stuff there, but anyhow. So thankfully the that situation is that Debbie's gonna take care of the child for now and Mark's gonna can try to continue doing his other things until they can figure something out. But I can already see this will probably not be a long-term solution. And again, we have no idea what to expect from this little boy because again, we don't know what Thraxons are like and how this mixture of DNA is gonna really work out for him. And Nolan's not around to even temper any of that right now either. But we see that Cecil actually has a vested interest in this little boy. Of course, he's still monitoring Deb's house and he's gonna monitor everything to do with Mark going forward because of what Nolan did. But he wants to help out with the baby, but we all know from last ep, the last episode of the episode, no, the episode before when Mark went to the Sea Kingdom, the Sea Kingdom, and Cecil was analyzing the sound that that Kraken thing made that managed to incapacitate Mark. Cecil's looking for anything to ensure that they have something that they can even begin to fight against the Viltrumites against if they do come back. And that's not wrong, right? That's his job as someone who's supposed to be taking care of the planet. So he sees, I can't think that he doesn't see this baby as anything other than a means to an end. He's looking at this baby and thinking, I'm just gonna turn him into a, a test subject and find out everything that could possibly hurt him so he can use it against his dad. And that's completely wrong and unethical and unfair. But as I said, I understand why he would feel the need to do that. We already know Cecil's the kind of guy who thinks that doing the lesser evil for the greater good is perfectly fine. In his mind, this would be a lesser evil. So yes, Mark, I don't know if Mark fully understands that at this point, I think he somewhat does, but that's why he's very determined not to let this baby end up in Cecil's hands. But I have a feeling it's gonna happen one way or another. Debbie's not gonna be able to take care of this kid forever. This kid's gonna be incredibly strong, possibly. I mean, if he's 
gonna age faster than Mark. My worry with the baby is that he's going to come into his powers faster than Mark did, but he's gonna still have the mentality of a child. So I feel like there's gonna be a weird conundrum there. We might end up with like a Hulk baby, <laughs> essentially. And that's a very dangerous thing to have. So anyway, my guess is the first time Mark's brother does something that's dangerous or it hurts anybody or any, or possibly hurts anybody, Cecil's gonna use that as the excuse he needs to, to pull him. That's my guess. But anyways, I, I just don't see it being long-term, I guess is my point with the brother, but we'll have to see. So outside of that, Mark caught up with Amber and Amber has gone through a few things since he left. She lost her grandpa, school's a lot harder than she expected. And she just misses having her, you know, her friend and her boyfriend around, which is understandable. And, you know, they caught up, but I think that Amber's starting to really feel what it means now to be with a superhero. I think in the in the beginning, it was a little bit of a novelty. I mean, why wouldn't it be? Oh yeah, we can fly to Vegas or fly to Paris and you know do all these things. You know, she's got access to things that the average girl with an average man would not have. But the huge, incredibly heavy downside is that he's called away on, on, at a moment's notice. He could disappear for two months. He always has to deprioritize de Amber and Amber's needs and Amber's wants for what he has to do, right? And that's for him too. Like he's de deprioritizing what he wants in order to do these things. So I think in theory, Amber thought this would be something that's easy to handle, not easy, but she thought she could handle it. But I think now she's starting to really understand and starting to feel the, the, the stress that comes along with this. We'll see. I mean, I think Amber wants to go through it, but we'll see if she's able to hang. If she's not, it would be understandable, but I really do think she's gonna give it her best shot and we'll see. And I'm, I think for Mark, he's going to also recognize a few things that it's very hard to maintain a relationship as well when you don't get to see that person and connect with them. And we see he feels very guilty about the fact that he wasn't there for her or there for Eve or there for his mom. But Mark really also has to recognize that he is not going to be able to do everything anyways. Like even if he wasn't a superhero <laughs> on the weekends or, you know, whenever, or sorry, even if he wasn't an on-call superhero, he would still not be able to be there for everyone all the time anyway, right? He's gonna have to just pick and choose what he's able to do. And the people around him are also gonna have to accept that there's only so much that he can do as well. So anyway, just some of the, the, real, the real life things that come along with the life that he's got. So that was basically the Mark side of things. And then we see that he didn't even get a chance to relax before a new threat entered. We saw last season, they kept dropping hints that what happened on Mars was far from over. It's starting to bring itself to Earth now. We see that the poor astronaut has been fully mind controlled by these aliens and they have come to Earth because they wanna continue taking over. Well, they wanna just have more bodies to take over because they can't take over the Martians. And we see that Cecil sent out a team to try to combat them, but there's only a handful of these, of the heroes that would be in a position to defend themselves against being taken over. Mark is one of them, but that was a small team. They didn't really have a full plan. It was very much like, and I understand it, they didn't have time. By the time they recognized what was coming into their orbit and what was happening, it was too late for them to really come up with a deep plan. But as we saw, it was very overwhelming. Eve was definitely clutch. They would have been gone immediately if Eve hadn't been there because we saw when the ship got destroyed, even Mark would have been the only ones who could have survived that, right? Everybody else would have, would have died. Oh, and maybe the Martian. I don't know if Martians need air. But anyway, they would have died immediately or froze to death because space is cold. But anyhow, we uh, see that the team did their best, but it wasn't quite enough. There's just too many of them. They didn't have a formulated plan. They're not sure how to even begin. Although we see that uh, robot does how he figured out a frequency that interferes with their ability to coordinate, but he has one suit to produce that sound and not enough time to get it to a point where you can amplify it long enough for them to, I guess what they want to do is get the astronaut away from them because that's kind of the only way right now that they have to do anything. But I don't know. I don't know what the answer to this problem is. I think Mark's going to have to be the one to do it somehow. Again, I feel like Mark often forgets how powerful he is. He still underestimates himself. And again, he's very new to his powers. Mark still has a lot to learn, but I think he's still capable of a lot. And I think maybe not necessarily uh, an area of effect type of thing, but I think that there's more that he's capable of doing that he just hasn't figured out yet. But there's nothing that pushes people to learning new things and being put with their back against the wall. So I feel like we see the episode ended with things getting to a point where the team is down, Eve is tapped out, they're about to get taken down, 
Mark's gonna have to do something. Otherwise, it's gonna mean everybody goes. Yeah, I think we're gonna see Mark break through in the next episode. He's gonna be pushed to a limit and probably figure out something new that he didn't know he could do before and somehow manage to pull it out. And then we see the other half of the team that was left on Earth. Unfortunately, things did not go well for them. They didn't go well for them at all. I knew from the second that Rex said, we're gonna chill till they get back. I'm like, nope, <laughs> you jinxed it, Rex. Just cause you said that something's gonna happen and that's exactly what did. Cecil sent what was left of the team to go and take care of it. He was thinking that they were just like the lizard people they've gone up against before but it turns out that there was some pretty tough, pretty tough opponents in there. And we ended up losing two out of the three. We lost Duplicate, RIP Duplicate. I actually kind of liked her, but yeah, unfortunately she's gone. And we also lost the girl who can shrink and, and grow. So that's two members of the team. Rex got beat up badly. And now we see that the King, Lizard King has a gun to his head, but I have a sneaking suspicion Rex is gonna survive this. I'm not sure why. But yeah, rough time for them down on the ground. Uh, I'm just glad that at least, you know, the most of the team didn't end up getting taken out, but we'll have to see what happens there. What happens when they get back and how Rex is gonna take this, because I think this is probably one of the hardest missions that he's had thus far. This episode just brought out that there's a lot of, a lot of things going on on many fronts here, and I'm not sure how it's all gonna culminate. You got this Martian issue, which hopefully they'll be able to take care of. Well, not Martian, but the Martian parasites. Hopefully they'll be taking care of that by next episode or for the most part, take care of it. There is still the issue with this lizard gang, which I don't think is over yet. Yeah, there's still the issue with Mark's little brother, how that's gonna be taken care of, plus the Viltrumites that are still the ever hovering concern. We still don't know what happened to Nolan, but I'm hoping that we get to see what, what, what happens with him. He might be out for the rest of the season. It's very possible, but I have a feeling we're gonna see him again in some capacity back on Viltrum. I am very curious to know what's going on on Viltrum and how things are going there. Cause I said before that I think the Viltrumites are actually stretched super thin and that they're not gonna kill Nolan and they're actually gonna to try to reprogram him because they need him. And then we also still have the overarching issue that's still lurking with the season two villain that was created earlier back in episode one, that of Angstrom Levy, who is still out there, still trying to figure out a way to take down Invincible and by proxy his father in every possible universe that he can. So we haven't touched on him since episode two. So I, I don't think we're gonna see too much of that, but again, that's just another iron in the fire that is in uh, in Mark's basket of things to deal with. So yeah, this was a great return. As I said, we had a lot to deal with in this episode. They let us have a lot to chew on, a lot to, do, to deal with, but since we took a big break, I'm not mad at it. They definitely sold some seeds for what we can look forward to for the rest of the season. So all of those things are happening. And on top of that, Mark still has not told his mom He's not told his girlfriend, he's not told anybody about the fact that the Viltrumites expect him to pick up where his dad left off and that they fully plan on visiting Earth at some point to, again, either collect on Earth or take him out. So he's gonna have to level up, he's gonna have to figure out what to do, and I do think he's absolutely going to have to ask for help because I think this is too much for him to take on by himself. But who he can trust and the right way to go, I couldn't even begin to tell you at this point. But yeah, stakes have been set up for the other half of the season and I'm looking forward to it. So yeah, I enjoyed this episode. They definitely came back swinging, like I said, and I am looking forward for the next one. So I hope that you enjoyed watching along with me. If you did, please show some love to this and I will see you in the next one.